All right, so let's get into uh, the topic for today. Uh, you know, the, in my mind, I'm just so focused on this book. So I need to shift gears and uh, get into um, what we're going to talk about today, which is the ultimate success formula. So who's, uh, who's ready for us to get started on the work today? Yeah, let's go. Okay, so here's a very interesting um, statement. Your choices, or if you still want to call them goals, are evolutionary points of creation that turn you into the person that you are becoming. Your desires, your choices, your goals are not just these, you know, that they're not, they're not just um, things you're going to create. They're actually, they're actually there for you to evolve. And we don't really uh, know uh, why a person gets a certain desire. We just know that they do. And, uh, and th these evolutionary points, just uh, sending you across this, um, Abby. There you go. Cool. Uh, so, so for me, uh, I was searching for a long time uh, for a way to be in the world. And, and I thought that my goals and choices were things that uh, once I achieved them would make my life completely different, not realizing that they're actually, that I actually had that round the wrong way. Does that make sense? Like I thought if I get this, then life will be different. Not realizing that by going for that, <laughs> I become different. Does everyone see the difference here? It's like I, I had it the wrong way around. Like I thought that the, the goal and then, ah, now it would be different. But it's actually, you set the choice, which means you've got to be different. So I had it completely wrong. And, and it's funny to, it's funny to think about that, you know. And so I was completely lost because my unconscious was always going, but if you have that, you know, then we're going to be different. And as we all know, uh, our unconscious doesn't want different. It doesn't want change. Right, it doesn't want different, doesn't want change, and so it would reject anything that I wrote down, and it would oscillate, and it would it would allow me to go, you know, a little bit to it, and then uh, it would create conditions and circumstances where I would say the same, right, and I'll just oscillate like that, and I, I would never have it. And I see this a lot: is that we, we still are not realizing that you got to be it now. And, you know, stand up from the seat after the session and go, okay, so how will I be now that I am that person, you know, be it to see it. And so, so the shift happens now. And the, the, the stuff that you're creating is just the point of tension that helps you evolve into the new you. Right? It just helps you evolve into the new. The, the number one reason why people don't succeed is that they structure this right from the beginning the wrong way around. You know, they structure it as though when I get that, then I'll, rather than that's what I'm going to create. So what do I need to be now? They shift, you got to shift first. And the shift happens instantly if you choose it to. Where you put the power or focus is what will manifest. So how many, those of you reading the book, you know, the new book, gosh, it's a good book. The, the new book uh, really demonstrates how we consistently put the power in predictable patterns, right? Right, like how we consistently walk down the unconscious path and, and consistently, we consistently do it and where we end up and where we end up, right? And, and the shift to the superconscious path, it's a completely different life full of magic, but it doesn't make, it, it's completely different. It's about being it. It's about letting go. It's about choosing it. It's about letting magic evolve. You know, it's really important. And so there's actually five steps, uh, you know, that we need to go through. And what we're going to go through today. There's five steps. And it, we, we must, we must know how to use these five steps because when you do, you will walk the superconscious path and you will walk right into that future because you, you are it. You, you will be it. And, and uh, I, I still have this moment, and it was years ago now, maybe three or four years ago, probably. It's before COVID anyway, so yeah, it was. 
And I'm walking along the beach uh, and you know, I'm there with my wife and I'm here in Gold Coast and beautiful, you know, golden sand beach. It was, it was an amazing day. You know, our dogs were playing in front of us. And I, I can't remember, maybe I, maybe I just done something that I thought was impressive in business because I was kind of reflecting on it. And I was, I was walking along this beach and I just started to get emotional, you know, and I was like, gosh, what is it? And I, and I realized that I'd actually walked into the future that I, that I had been, um, you know, focusing on so many times. You know, I walked into it. I, I'd become it. I was like, this was the person that had been sending me all of these obvious actions to take. This was the guy. And here he was walking. This is it. And I was like, wow, you know, I've, I've literally walked into, into that future. But see, the thing is, is that you can't walk into the future and have it if you're not already it. And so choices, goals are evolutionary points. They're going to evolve you, right? And, and so you must have them. And, and we don't really know how they shop or why they shop. We just know that you put them out there. So, you know, it's, it, it's really cool that I, I just wrote a fiction book. For somebody who didn't finish high school, that's a, that's a big deal. No, so I've just finished a fiction book. And in order to have done that and to, to write this, you know, 200 and something page book that is transformational fiction, it's, it's, it's amazing. And to do that, you have to, you have to become it and then you get the book. Does that make sense? So, so it was out there. It was like, oh, I'm going to write this thing. I remember going, really? I don't know, like character development. So I had to learn character development and understand three phases of a story and, and how, to, how to have cliffhangers and create tension and, uh, inside the story and how to make sure that there was, you know, one voice and you know, just, just all sorts, right? And backstories of each character and everything else. So it all, it all fits. And, and so you have to become it. And, and this is such a good reflection for what we're talking about today is whatever it is that you're creating, it will evolve you into something else. Now, the first step is you must create true end results. True end results. Now, by definition, uh, a true end result is just something you would love to create. It, it's, it's not a negative vision, right? A negative vision is where you're creating something to compensate. You're creating something to fix. You're creating something because of. So a true end result and can somebody put some true end results in it? A, a true end result is just, I would love to be that, to have that, to do that, and that will be great. And I would just love it. There's no other, it's, it's just because I would like that to exist. It's not going to fix me, heal me, change me. It's, it's just, that's what I would love. And, you know, so some of the things we would love is, you know, we would love to have a, a, a healthy, functional body. We would love to have a, a loving relationship, live in a home. We would love to you know, impact other people's lives, have a great family. Like, you know, these things we would like to, would like to have that. Just, just this would be bloody great to create. And you, and you, you commit to it. And, uh, and, and a true end result must, uh, m there must be a few things. So the first and the most important is what I just said, is that you, you, do, just, you do just want it. You just, you just do want it. You know that you want it. You, you would like to create it. You'd like to see it exist. And, and that's enough. You, you love it. Uh, when you love something, you want to love it into existence. And, and, you, just, and you, you must realize that you, you just want it. In order to, to get to that place, there's a few things that, that we need to, to check up on. Uh, and, and one of the most important ones is that you uh, are not trying to resolve your identity through it. Right? You're not trying to resolve any part of your identity. Many people, their true choices are actually like trying to resolve one of their nine orientation points. Now, in the new book, I cover the nine orientational points um, in detail, right? And uh, you can see that each one of the orientational points has uh, a wound. Right, it has a it has a has a wound, and many times someone's choices are actually um, growing out of that wound to try to compensate for it. Right, and this is this is just the such an important thing, right? So, 
really quickly, uh, you know, by the way, get the new book. It's, uh, it's all been emailed to you. Go get the new book because I want to cover all of these in the session this weekend. So please make sure you've got it. The, the nine is one feeling that they're broken, that there's something wrong with them, feeling that they're not worthy, feeling that, and then you do something, feeling that uh, they're not valid, uh, feeling that they don't belong, feeling that they don't understand the world, feeling that they're not safe, uh, feeling uh, that they can't have anything negative feelings, uh, feeling that they can't be vulnerable, uh, and lastly, feeling that they're a nobody. And, 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 those, um, and those nine are what most people base their choices out of. Does that make sense? Most are basing their choices out of that. So let's just quickly go through it because it's really, uh, it's important to understand, um, you know, understand that. No, the book right now is not on Audible. It's not even on Amazon. It is a pre-release uh, ebook that I've sent to just the community. Uh, so it's just going to the community. It's a pre-release. No one else in the world is going to have it uh, for at least a few weeks. It's been emailed to you. So let, help me out here. If, if somebody has the uh, wound of not of I'm not perfect, what choice might they create that is trying to compensate for that wound? Fill me in. Just, just well, let's have some fun. What would they create? So if they have a, an unconscious orientation of not being perfect, what might they create? Fill me in in the, in the, in the chat box. They, they're going to have choices relating to how they're perfect. So they will, they will try to uh, only be good and whatever good means to them. They will try to have the perfect uh, image and perfect body. And they will never do anything in the face of criticism. One of the, the does that make sense? So that all their goals will be about, I want to be, I've got to be like this. Um, they say things like, I need to go to the gym, you know, an hour every single day. I need to drink more healthy water. I need to be better. But it's always about, there's a way to be perfect. And all their choices align with it. Does that make sense? They, they want... This way, this way, this way. So, so that's that's really interesting, and that's not a true choice. The the second, um, you know, the the belief that they're not worthy. Fill me in. If someone has the unconscious uh, wound and orientation of not being worthy, what might they do? That's right, Marion. Yeah, that's right. What might they do with their choices? And so that the choices of this person who's not worthy is the first, they try to help everyone else. So the I'm not worthy choice, they have choices for their kids, choices for their spouse, choices for their community, choices about all the people that they want to help. Everything is about everyone else because they're not worthy. Isn't that interesting? Everything's about someone else. It's never about them receiving. They don't, they're not worthy. So they never just say, they never just want to have and receive for them. It's always about, I want to have this for them and this for them and this for them and this for them and that, them, them, them. Make sense? And, and that's the second word. And so the, the third word uh, is the, the idea that they're not valid without achievement. And so all that they do is try to achieve and be impressive, achieve, 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 achieve. They don't go for what they love. So we could sit here and go through all of them, but I, but I cover it in detail, you know, in the, in the new book. And it is about understanding the first step is true choices. It's true choices. So to make sure it's a true choice, uh, the first thing that we must understand is what I've just explained is that you know, it can't be, it, it can't be based out of one of your unconscious wounds because all you're doing then is setting up oscillation. Second thing that's really important is that the, the, the choice or goal must be able to be completely created 
uh, by the individual. So, you know, it, it must be this is what I'm creating and I have complete uh, ability to create it myself. I don't need someone else to create it. It's me that's going to create. Now, there might be others that come and go. So, for example, you might be creating a great business and then book be other you know, team or staff that come in and out of that choice. And they may even make it their choice too, but it's not, I need to do it with this person or with that person, you know. Uh, everyone else has free will, okay? So that's very important is that that you can do it. The next thing that's, that I think is really important about your true choices is that you must know when you've completed it, right? Like you must know, you must know, okay, I've actually created this, it's completed. So whether it's a feeling uh, or, or a real choice or a new, you must know, you must have a point, okay, well, this is completion. Uh, one of the ways that we uh, allow ourselves to not have true choices uh, and never complete is we never actually define, you know, what the end result is, you know. So if we're going to create an easy, lucrative and fun business. Is that $5,000 a week? Is it $10,000 a month? Like, is it 100000 a year? What What is that? I don't know. Uh, we need to become really, really uh, clear on it. And, and I think uh, just to summarize this first point of, you know, you must have true choices is that it is not really that important what the goal is. It, it, it isn't. What, what's more important is what it is, who you become because of it. Does that make sense? Like it's who you become because of it. You're setting, you're setting yourself out this, on this journey and all choices are just evolutionary points. You go for it and you, you rise to be that person. So that's, that's step one. And so right now, really, really consider what is it that I would really like to create what what's in my heart you know without editing without deleting what do i what would i love to create and then go okay cool and how will that make me feel when i create that you know how will i be how will i feel when i create that because even if your choice is uh, to help a lot of other people right it's actually about you feeling good about that you're actually selfishly enjoying helping others. That's the key. That all comes back to the feeling. It's like, all right, I do want to help people because I am going to feel really good to help them. Not uh, I'm going to make everyone else change. It's I'm actually going to feel good helping whether they change or not. That's them. But I feel good doing it. And, and that's when you'll become that person. And that leads into um, the second um, step, which is the emotion, uh, emotion, right? Is that you, the, the emotion is how you train your unconscious. See, your unconscious is actually your ally. And so uh, the unconscious is your ally and it's completely trainable. Like it, it's trainable. Whatever that it learns to survive, it will just want more of, okay? It doesn't have discernment. So your unconscious just goes, okay, that's the feeling we have. And did I die? No. Okay, that must be an okay feeling. And so this is why the second step of us closing our eyes and visualizing the end result and noticing that it's going to feel good, feel a certain way, right? This is, this is so crucial because our unconscious has to accept the end result. Most of us are creating pictures in our mind of what we don't want and telling stories about how we can't have it we've got this whole this whole when really we set our mind to it we create the right picture we step into it we create the pictures the feelings and, and we step into it we and we really do we really want to feel it because by feeling it that i mean that the feeling is the secret behind all prayer and all manifestation and, and everything here. It's the feeling, you know, the feeling is the secret. It's you get into that feeling. You get into it. You, it, you experience it as done. And that's why step two is so important. So, so once you write down the, the first, uh, you know, this is what I choose. And the next is that you step in and you experience it and you feel it. This is why 
the the choice can't be about anyone else because it's about how you feel this is why the choice needs to have a point where it ends because you want to know how it's going to feel when it's created and so a lot of times uh, i'll create multiple um moments where i will know this choice is completed and this allows me to feel uh the end result in different ways so for example let's say uh, well, let's use my book as an as example, because it's a bit of a, it's on my mind. So there's many moments that let me know that I've achieved writing the book. You know, there's the, the first time someone reads it and gives me feedback. There's the first time that I'm going to hold it. There's, um, you know, smiling and signing it and taking a photo with someone. There's um, the moment that I actually said to the editor, that's it, we're done, we're, we're good to go. So there's lots of these moments. Does that make sense? There's lots of these moments. And so when you're stepping into the end result uh, and then you go, how would it feel? I will pick up on many different moments and I'll feel how will it feel, you know, when I'm taking that photo of someone? How will it feel when I'm signing it? How will I feel when it's on Amazon? How will I feel when, uh, you know, I say it's done or I say, you know, or how will it feel when when people around me, you know, read it for the first time, right? So does that make sense? So every choice you're making, there are so many times that you're going to be able to uh, remember the future, right? You'll be able to remember before they happen. There are so many different points you can step into. So, we, so a lot of people get bored on the second step because they just go, "Okay, uh, this is what I create, and uh, and as I as I create that, this is this is how it will feel." And so it's like, "Well, that's one moment, but there's going to be, you know." so many other moments that you can get into and experience in different ways, which are just teaching your unconscious more and more that it's that it's done, that it's happening, that it's survivable, right? And, and that's, that's, that's crucial. So the third step, why is it that we must go into structural tension? Like why, why don't we just do what other people um, suggest and you, you just go out there and then you just surrender? Why, you know, oh, I just feel that's it. Leave it out there. Uh, the, the reason is, is that that doesn't create movement. Uh, a structure, it's just scientific, needs more than one point of, uh, to, to create a structure. It needs two. And many times by just trying to stay in the end result, there's no tension to move. See, uh, some people say, oh, cool, I visualize it, so it's done. Has anyone ever heard that? Oh yeah, it's done. No, it's done now. Well, you visualized it, you know, it's just, it's done. Yep, it's done. It's like, well, no, actually it's not done because I'm still here with the same bank account and the same body. You know, it's not fucking done, all right? <laughs> it's like just because you, you visualize, it's not done at all. And so what happens is if, if you don't acknowledge the current reality, you don't show your unconscious what needs to shift right it, you don't teach it and so the unconscious always wants to move towards pleasure and away from pain is that right like we know that like it doesn't want negative it wants positive so just just think this through if we choose an end result we experience it we close our eyes we uh, we we feel it in five ten fifteen different ways of how great it's going to feel we go that that is what i want to create we just feel good right feel good oh awesome feel good there was a nice visualization but then if we go and compare to that, oh, you know, this isn't as good. I, this, is, I, th this is how it is. The brain goes, you're right. This actually isn't as good. We need to let go of this and become that. Right? We need to let this go. Like if we don't acknowledge how it is and, and we go, well, actually, you know, that's what we want to create. We look, look comparing these two points, we want to be there. And so structural tension is crucial. And so we need to go into the now and go, well, here's how it is. And sometimes it's it's bad, sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's pretty good. But all as we know is we want it, we want to go there. And, and, and that's the whole setup. But we do this in a creative way. And that's why it's structural tension, right? Or creative tension, is that when you create a structure, movement can occur. Until you create a structure, no movement can happen. Right? And we must remember that. The current reality 
is the way it is for some really, really good reasons. Like the, your, the current reality didn't just show up, you know, like it, it's not like it just was like, here, here it is. There are things that you did, didn't do, felt, um, avoided, took action on, told stories about, uh, based on uh, par uh, patterning from parents and society and, and your own structure. It, it's been created and it's not that bad really. And, and so it's been created. And so as we acknowledge, well, this is what I've created and this is what I'm creating next, that sets up the structure and we can ask the question, well, what would someone have to believe or to, in order to have created this experience, right? Like what does someone actually have to believe to have created this? What's holding this structure here? And that's where recode comes. So, so third step is structural tension. The fourth is recode, right? And so, so recode or, or some sort of change work it's basically saying, okay, so if we want to be there and we know that it's survival and we, we're choosing to create that and we know we need to evolve and we're currently in this and, we're, and those who have set that structure, what is it that we need to let go of so that this moves to that easily, right? And, that, and then we teach our brain how to do recode. It understands the football field. It understands the gophers. It understands that between conception and now there's been patterns that we've picked up and beliefs and thought patterns that are holding this together. And all we go is we ask ourselves, well, well, what is it that's holding this? And then we ask for change history, change history. We do let it all go. And then this can move to that. Right. And, and, I, and I wanted to take today to just remind everyone, you know, of those, those steps, right? Because the, the last step is action, which is once you've let go of current reality, Current reality is like a trailer. It's like a truck and trailer. It's like one of those um, blow up inflatables behind a speedboat, right? It's just going to move wherever that end result is. As soon as you, you, you let go of resistance, the last step is just action. It's just, it's, it's just you step into it. And every time you step into it, a new current reality uh, is taken. A new current reality is taken. A new, and, a new current reality is, is, is created. And it just and it flows. Now, so that's the, the last step is, is flowing. Is, and so just as recap, you, you get true end result. You step into the emotion of it, teach your unconscious how it is. You come back, create structural tension. How is it now? Uh, notice, uh, well, what, what, is, what is holding this current reality as it is? Recode that. And then lastly, we, we become it. We be it. We take the action. And we must remember that just because the, the forest isn't there yet doesn't mean that the seed that's growing into the sapling isn't being the forest. You know, just because out there is the, you know, the fully accomplished author, the person sitting down frustrated on a blank piece of paper is that author. That, that is the same, but the, they are it. As soon as they're in the flow of it, they are it. It's just, it's just letting the last step unfold, which is taking the action. And this is how you know Recode is, has done its job. If, you've, if Recode has done its job and you're in good structural tension, if, if, this, if this has got all the good feels and this is where we are now and then we've, we've let go of what's holding this together and then we, take, we should just be taking the action and the current reality just takes the action and should just slowly move into this. And that's it. It just moves. And it moves slowly because your unconscious has to uh have have some sort of um understanding of of how the world is and so you know instead of a, a jump from zero to millions sometimes can freak out well this is so it will, it will just allow a little bit at a time a little bit a little bit until you until you fully go you know somebody who's got a massive fear of rejection uh, it's it's totally uh, usual that they just do a little bit of putting themselves out there, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then all the way out. When you don't take the action, uh, it's that there's just resistance to taking the action. And so there's just a reason. Whatever, uh, you know, what whatever is the current reality, if the current reality includes I'm not taking action even though I know I should, there's simply just a code that's playing out in the background. There's just simply a reason. We're never, we're never broken. There's nothing wrong with us. There's just something that we've 
we've we've learned um, that's either been passed down through our genes and family line or that we've picked up in this timeline and we've just learned it and so whenever there's information we go well, well we ask questions and we recode we let that go and we let it go and then we take the action and uh and i want i want to just like really get this across to all of you it's like you are you you, you have the answers in those five steps you know you have them and and really choose to be on that super conscious path it's not for babies it's not for it, it's not for people that aren't committed it's it's for the courageous few they're actually going to go you know what i'm going to let go of my biggest vulnerabilities i'm going to let go of how i think the world is i'm going to let go of my limitations and i'm going to actually become someone different and the reason why it's so scary is you actually, as you shift into that, you become someone, someone different. And the, the scary part in becoming someone different is you can no longer relate to the old you. And the, uh, the old you uh, also had lots of good stuff about it, it had friends and family and connections, but you, you can't relate to that anymore. And, and the unconscious, as much as your conscious mind goes, oh, I don't want to be like that at all. The, uh, the, the unconscious um, doesn't truly love that. And so it's up to you to be courageous. Oh.